A few weeks ago I built an ornithopter, which is a thing that flaps its wings like a bird to fly. I haven't built many successful flying things before, but this is something I've always wanted to try. My version 1 attempt had some good characteristics, like the motor and double stage belt reduction I built was strong enough, and it could flap its wings fast enough and with what looked like enough force to fly. The overall mass was a bit high though, and as many people pointed out, my wings were pointed at the tips, which is where there should be the most lift, so I should have a larger surface area. Also my wing fabric was a bit loose, which isn't efficient. So this time I'm going to build the most minimal frame I can to support the belt reduction and wing mechanism, along with a slightly different wing structure, and see how far we get. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects, so check out my channel for more 3D printing projects and check out 3dfuel.com. We'll start assembly with the front of the ornithopter, which has two parts, each containing a bearing, and those are the mounts for the main pulley that's going to drive the wing mechanism. That fits in the middle, and that fits snugly in those bearings, mustn't forget to put the belt on, and then the other side fits on top of that, and it goes in and it twists round and then it can be attached with two screws on one end and one screw on the other end. That should rotate freely within those bearings either side, leaving the stub sticking out which is where the levers attached to go to the wings. This time everything is mounted on two carbon fibre tubes which are about 8.5mm in diameter, so I've glued on that front section. We of course have an intermediate pulley as we did before, mounted on another mount, and all of these are just super glued to the carbon fibre rods to give me that double stage belt reduction and just allow me to tension the belts. The motor is the one I used last time which is 930 kV and again I'm going to double brace it with the bearing in the motor and another bearing on the end by the pulley so it doesn't just bend the plastic it's attached to and I can tension the belt. And again that's mounted with another mount attached to the carbon fibre tubes. So we get that double stage belt reduction and that runs freely all the way through. We'll just give that a quick test, and I bought the motor and ESC as a package on Amazon, so it's just a really cheap 30 amp ESC for drones, but that seems to run pretty freely. Now this is probably running too fast for the size of the ornithopter, so in the future we could consider another belt reduction stage, but we'll see how it goes this time. So I've added the levers for the wings which have multiple holes in so I can change the leverage angle but for now that looks okay and we're going to put carbon fibre rods in these so they're quite long so there's somewhere to shove the rod into and it doesn't just snap the plastic. But that seems to be working pretty well. I bought a selection of carbon fibre components this time including the 8.5mm tubes and also some 4mm, 2mm and 1mm rods. Now, because I don't really know what I'm doing, I thought I'd copy someone else. I found this really good looking ornithopter on YouTube which flies really well. It looks like it's mostly made from carbon fibre, it also has some metal components in it around the wing levers, and it's carrying what looks like a 1600mAh battery. The carbon fibre rod wing structure is very interesting though, which I'm going to copy entirely. I'm pretty sure I haven't saved that much mass with this new structure, so I've decided to make the wings slightly bigger, but I'm copying the triangle structure that I've seen on other ornithopters. That's a hinge point at the back where the extra braces come back, and also brackets on the end, so we get this big triangle on each side to stretch the fabric over. I'm using any old contact adhesive, and I found some in a box of glue, and the fabric is ripstop fabric I got off Amazon, and basically this is quite light, tough, and airtight and it's used for making kites and that sort of thing. So I'm basically this time instead of using packing tape, just gluing the carbon fibre rods in by overlapping the fabric and wrapping it round with lots of glue in. So that involves putting a bunch of glue down, several runs either side of the carbon fibre rods, and then going away and leaving it to go tacky for about 3-5 to five minutes 
and then coming back and folding it over and sticking it down. And I've tried to sort of squash the glue along there to make sure it's stuck to the carbon fibre rod as well as to itself. For the cross brace tube I've done the same thing and then I've just used a spare piece of fabric which I just cut into a strip and I stuck that down. So that should adhere to the carbon fibre again and to the main wing fabric so that that doesn't come off and it should be pretty strong with that glue once the glue is set properly. I've also laid out these finger spline sections and these are made of some thinner 2mm carbon fibre rod which is pretty flexible but it helps hold the edge of that wing tensioned so that it always trails the rest of the wing and it should push air backwards as the flapping motion happens. And these are stuck on with super glue mainly because I ran out of contact adhesive and again I've stuck another strip on top of them as well as gluing the carbon fibre itself onto the wing so that should never never ever come off hopefully. And I added another two thinner carbon fibre rods above the wing just zip tied on each end onto that main carbon fibre tube and that'll stop the wing lifting up in the middle so it'll always fold. But since we're talking about something that flies in the sky, it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor, which is Swarm. Swarm is a satellite company that provides the world's lowest cost global connectivity for remote internet of things devices at just $5 a month. Swarm have a new eval kit which makes their network more accessible than ever. Swarm satellites cover 100% of the globe, so this is a really cool way for anyone to communicate from anywhere on the planet. The eval kit takes less than 5 minutes to assemble and you can transmit messages or GPS positions at the touch of a button. The kit also comes with everything you need to build an IoT sensor or tracker that integrates with the device like a weather station or motion detector. Swarm has extensive developer documentation on their website to help you program the kit so you can integrate it with your project or industry. The kit's available to buy online today at swarm.space store. Use my coupon code JAMES30 for 30% off. Right, let's get back to this ornithopter. So I'm really much happier with this. The wing fabric is tensioned nicely in those triangles and we've got that tension trailing edge just like the ornithopter that I'm copying. I also made a tail which is just two carbon fibre rods in a 3D print and some fabric and that just slots on the back. Eventually we'll be able to steer but for now I just want to see how it goes. And for now, it seems like it's pretty convincing. Um, I'm pretty happy with how the wings move. They seem to have enough power. And I can really feel the backdraft coming off the back of the wings. So I'm pretty hopeful that this one's going to fly. As before, I'm using a 1600 milliamp 3 cell battery. And that seems sufficient to power the motor. And that's mounted at the back at the moment. So we'll just start with a gliding test and that seems pretty well balanced, much better than version 1 anyway. So let's power it up and see what happens. Well, it's hard to actually see in that footage, but in fact what happens is it's got so much lift it flies straight up in the air, stays there for a bit, does a backflip and then crashes into its nose, which broke the pulley to pieces which is sticking out that I deliberately made more minimal so it was lighter. So I've made a new one which is going back to a solid one again because I think this is going to happen a few times and of course that's mounted on some fairly hefty bearings for the size of the thing so hopefully it should be more substantial. I've also moved the battery back to the midsection so it's not so back heavy. So let's try again. Well something very strange is happening and basically what's happening is the motor is stalling and then it's nose diving so it seems okay while I'm holding it. But as soon as there's any load on the motor, then basically the motor stalls and it crashes. It's actually very hard to get the motor speed right, and if I run it too fast, it's just a twitching mess. Now, it is a cheap drone ESC, so I decided to try a car ESC, which should be used to more gnarly motors and used to running at various other speeds, including more slowly. So it's marginally better, the wings flap for longer but they are still stalling and they just basically won't keep flapping when there's load on them. It is getting further though and I'm feeling a bit more convinced about this. It is really hard to get that motor speed right though, there's such a fine line between really fast and the wings are flexible so they just twitch around and the right speed that they need to be. The new ESC is much heavier though, so I've moved the battery to the front now and I've put these on sliders so we can slide them around. The motor is still stalling unfortunately, but if you look very carefully you can see when it does flap its wings that it gets lift and it flies fairly convincingly, but then the wings stall 
and then of course it just nose dives. But I seem to have the front to back balance okay now and it's flying much further. It's still really hard to get the wing speed correct though, there's such a fine line between just causing the wings to flex when they go too fast and not getting their full range of motion. It really feels like it wants to fly though, so I think if we can sort out the motor power and stop the motor stalling, it would probably work. So yeah, we do have nearly a six foot wingspan, so it's actually pretty big and it's much bigger than it was last time in terms of surface area at least, and that's why the motor is stalling out because it can't just take the load that we want it to. So I think what we really need is a bigger reduction here. The motor will still go faster. In fact, it goes too fast. So we should make use of that by reducing it down further so the motor runs faster, it's happier, and with a bigger reduction, there'd be less torque on the motor so it shouldn't stall. So I think I could either add another belt reduction stage or we could just make the pulleys bigger, but probably we'd just go for another reduction stage and put another section in. Now I would just add that to here and test it, the problem is they're glued on really well, so I don't think I can get these pieces off and move them. Probably have to buy more carbon fibre tubes and break these pieces off and rebuild the whole thing to try and do it. So for that reason, I'm going to come back with a part three and try and do that. And at that point, I think it should work pretty well. I'm also not sure if my wings are moving up and down far enough, looking at the other ornithopter that I'm kind of copying. So we may be to even move the um, leverage angle there to give a bigger range of motion in the wings once we have maybe another three to one or four to one belt reduction stage that will give us three or four times more power. So I think that's what's gonna happen as well as um, a V tail so that we can actually steer, which will go on at the back. Of course, we'll need more mass for a couple of servos for that. So, but apart from that, I think the wings are pretty good. I'm gonna keep this structure and probably these actual wings and just rebuild the body slightly. So obviously this is something I've never done before. I'd like to do more flying projects. So I thought I'd pick a really complicated one. Eventually I'll publish all the CAD, but for now don't build it because it doesn't work. If you'd like to support me through Patreon though, then you can and the links are in the description to this video and also YouTube channel members and patrons and YouTube channel members can get access to all the videos up to a week early with no ads in, as well as sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up so you can be part of that discussion. All right, that's all for now.